So what do you think you need to create good content, good video content? It's kind of a loaded question, but what I'm talking about is content that you can be proud of and videos that you can share confidently and even productions from which you can possibly make some money from. Do you think you need this or maybe this or this or this or this? Nope, it's actually none of those. All you need is this and this and maybe an external microphone, but that's a whole nother video. So today what I'd like to show you is the Moza Mini S smartphone gimbal. The Moza Mini S is packed with features. It provides amazingly smooth footage. It's lightweight, it's foldable, and it comes in at a very attractive price. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you both the strengths and the weaknesses of the Moza Mini S, and I'm gonna tell you why you should consider getting it as your very first gimbal. Welcome back everyone. If you happen to be here for the very first time, my name is Russ, and on this channel, you're gonna find a variety of content mostly related to high quality camera drones and related things like that, but also some other video production topics, reviews, comparisons, tutorials, and other stuff. So check out some of my videos and if you enjoy what you see, click on that subscribe button for future content. Now you may be familiar with the saying that the best camera is the one that you have with you, and it really is true. You're interested in capturing imagery, whether it be photography or cinematography or whatever, you're watching this video because you're interested in those things. So what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the perfect camera because it doesn't exist? Just ask this guy or ask this guy. This guy buys more cameras than there are Tootsie Rolls thrown at a parade. The perfect camera is either in your hand right now or it's in your pocket. It's your phone. Phone cameras are amazing these days and they're getting better and better all the time. But the problem with the video from our smartphones is that you still have that shakiness. And even with the best phones that have stabilization, you still have so much shakiness in your videos. Now in 2018, I bought my very first gimbal. It was the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. I loved it, it was great. But when the Osmo Pocket was released and then the firmware updates started making it better, my Osmo Mobile 2 began to collect dust on the shelf. So why the Moza Mini S? Well, like I said, your smartphone most likely has a very nice camera and rather than spend anywhere from $350 up to $2,000 and even higher, for $79, you'll have everything that you need to get great footage. The Moza Mini S is foldable, so it's still compact enough to take with you just about everywhere, not in your pocket like the Osmo Pocket, but again, $79. Stabilized video at that price has been unheard of until this. So first of all, let's dig into the sort of footage that you can expect to obtain with this gimbal. Now I went camping last weekend with my family and I only took my Mavic 2 Pro, my smartphone, and this gimbal. And what it did is it forced me to capture everything using just my phone. And I'm so happy that I did that. It's amazing how differently you approach things when your gear is limited. And I shouldn't say limited because you can do so much with your smartphone. But I was surprised that I didn't even miss my A6400 after just one day of relying on my phone. The controls on the Moza Mini S could be a little more first time user friendly. It takes a few times of using it to remember how to engage each mode. Now that being said, even after just a couple of minutes of using it, you will be able to capture creative stabilized video because all you have to do is download the Moza Genie app, attach your phone, which self balances, that's really cool. You can actually leave your case on. I leave my case on my Google Pixel 3 XL, turn on the gimbal with the long press of the power button, connect the Bluetooth and start recording. You're ready to go. Let's get a general overview of the app. Now on the screen, when you pull it up, the first thing that you're gonna see on the upper left hand corner is the battery indicators and then you'll see the mode indicator. Head on over to the right side and you'll see the resolution and frame rate. You're gonna see the flash indicator and which camera mode you're in, either photo mode or video mode. At the bottom left, you'll see the gallery button, the gimbal connection, and then the follow mode button. 
Right in the middle bottom, you'll see the time indicator. And then to the right, you'll see the front and back camera selector, the settings icon, and finally the record button. When you first turn on the gimbal, it defaults to pan follow mode, which is the most common mode and what you'll be using most of the time. And that's where when you move the gimbal from side to side, it will travel smoothly in that direction. Taking a look at the trigger functions, this gimbal does have a trigger, which is really cool. If you wanna follow a vertically moving subject, or maybe you wanna do a vertical reveal, what you do is you just hold the trigger down and it locks into tilt follow. And another function of the trigger is to lock every access, which keeps the phone completely still. And you can enter that mode by tapping the trigger twice, but you hold it down that second time. The trigger is also used for returning the gimbal to center, which you should do each time you wanna switch different modes. Simply double tap twice to make that happen. Now on the handle, you'll see the power button, the USB-C charging port, the joystick, the control buttons, which I'll go over here shortly, the zoom control, and then at the bottom, you're gonna see the battery indicator, which I do wish was a little bit brighter because in bright conditions, you can't really see it. The battery does last for eight hours, which I did confirm this last week, and I used a variety of modes, including 4K at 30, slow motion mode, motion time-lapse, and zooming in and out. So that's a pretty good battery life. As for the functions of the buttons, the top one brings up your menu, the right side button brings up the gallery. If you wanna use FPV or the roll follow mode, you click the M button or the left button twice, and that will do a roll follow. Now, honestly, I don't think this is something that I will ever use, but some people might like it. And if you click the bottom button three times, it enters the ever popular inception mode. It only rotates 270 degrees, but you can actually cheat on that a little bit to get a full 360 degrees by rolling the gimbal as it spins. It really is a pretty fun little feature. Now, the gimbal does have sports mode, which is engaged by clicking that bottom button just two times, and this allows you to do quick kind of a whip pan, but personally, I don't think I'll ever use this mode, but it could be useful for things like action sports or other things like that. Now, I did show you the tracking option on the app, which works quite well. For me, it only lost the subject once, and that was because of a quick change of direction. You know, tracking is all the rage right now, and the Moza Mini S does it wonderfully. The joystick has good tension and is input sensitive, so the faster you move it, the faster that the gimbal's gonna move. Now, I will say that it takes some time getting used to, when I first used it, a lot of my shots were way too fast. So there is a little bit of a learning curve to that. So if you're thinking about dipping your toes into the gimbal market and explore what stabilized footage can do for you, I can highly recommend the Moza Mini S. It's compact size, lightweight, array of functions, long battery life, and excellent stabilization for a mere $79 make it a wonderful choice. As far as the shortcomings, I guess my biggest complaints are the lack of clear definition of the function buttons, and then, okay, just a few issues that I discovered today as I was shooting B-roll for this video. What I did is I went through all of the menu options and I just wanted to see if there's any more compatibility issues or software issues or anything like that. And I did find three things that I wanna tell you about. Number one, if you're using a screen recording software like I am right now, sometimes it will crash when you're recording with the Moza Genie app. And so hopefully it doesn't crash when I'm making this portion of the video. But if you're recording with the Moza Genie app and you're using a screen recording software, at least with my phone, the Google Pixel 3 XL, um, sometimes they don't work well together and it will crash the app or the gimbal goes into sleep mode. Number two, when you have anti-shake mode engaged, which is kind of an odd option, I think for a gimbal, but when anti-shake is engaged and you hit record on the gimbal, it crashes the app. And so I think that anti-shake mode is for when you're not using the gimbal and you're just using the app as a camera app. I think that's what it's for. It's not for using with the gimbal. So just be aware if you're gonna use both of those at the same time, it's gonna crash, at least if you have a Google Pixel 3 XL. And then the final issue that I discovered is sometimes in the upper left-hand corner when it tells you what mode you're in, like all lock mode or tilt lock mode or whatever, sometimes that doesn't show up. Like right now, you can see it's not showing up on the screen. And so sometimes it, there sometimes it's not there and so i'm not sure why that happens and so those are three issues that i discovered today as far as the other options on the menu i didn't find any other issues so i just wanted to share that with you keep in mind i do have the google pixel 3 xl and so if you have a different phone you might have different issues now i'm going to get out of here before the mosquitoes eat me alive <laughs> I do think the Moza Mini S would be an excellent vlogging solution because you already have a smartphone. You get this for 79 bucks. You get the bar, um, brain fart right now, I can't remember what it's called, but the mounting bar in the bottom 
to mount an external microphone. That bar is super cheap. The Rode Video Micro is only 60 bucks. And then you need the TRS to TRRS adapter to go into your phone and you have a really good stabilized vlogging solution. If maybe you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description for everything that you need, but I think it would be a great affordable solution for starting a vlogging channel. One of the biggest turnoffs when you're watching a vlogger is that shakiness, and so adding this for 79 bucks and getting rid of that shakiness really is gonna make a difference in stepping up your production quality. So that's the Moza Mini S from Goodson. It really is a great choice. Other than those couple of things I said could be improved, you really can't go wrong for the price with this gimbal. Do you think you need a gimbal to produce good content? Do you think it's necessary to have stabilized footage? I do, but maybe you have a different opinion. Let me know in the comments. I hope I gave you something of value today. If I did, click on that thumbs up button on your way out. I wanna thank you for watching today. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.